What makes these problematic and where our educational task comes in is that they are hard to solve because we are wired against them. We are wired not to deal well with complex problems. It is in our, uh, in our DNA, quite literally. And uh, behavioural economists have done a great deal in helping us understand our cognitive biases, the things that we are inclined to do, and unfortunately most of them incline us against being good at dealing with complex problems. We tend to anchor things, for example. So we take, uh, and you classically do it when people buy, buy things. They take a price that they first see, and then they adjust to see whether they're getting good value either side, either side of that. If you're buying petrol, we'll commonly do that. Now, anchoring's enormously dangerous if you face a world that can suddenly, suddenly change. We misjudge risk badly. We tend to, and it's the kind of classic fear of flying uh, versus uh, driving cars. Often people misjudge risk. And that's a difficult problem because all of the, the maths of complex systems is not the maths of neat uh, parabolas. It's the maths of power laws, which means one event causes a massively disproportionate amount more harm than countless small events. And we are very unfamiliar with dealing with those kind of numbers because they're not in our common experience. We also tend to give a lot of weight to things that are prominent to us. People, if there's a lot of news reports of crime, people will feel much, less, much more insecure, even if there is no actual uh, reason to feel fundamentally different. We are self-oriented, um, and of course we discount the future. Unless we require people to have superannuation, they never put enough aside. Wicked problems is the next feature, and they're unco they're the challenge of wicked problems, and I, I kind of in the interest of time, won't go through all of these. But the essence of the problems we're working on is they keep changing as you work on them. And you don't get a second chance at solving these problems. Every time you work on them, in a sense, the problem keeps evolving and keeps, uh, keeps happening. They're a very different kind of problem, too, because there isn't a one right answer. There isn't a neat solution to wicked problems. Actually, there are many solutions. What matters is producing a workable one. Our problems are, and Graham, uh, uh, both uh, Graham and Rod highlighted them, they are truly grow global. And I don't need to probably play on this much. This little snapshot I'm about to show you just shows how much more physically connected the world is and lots of other flows relate to it. This is a picture of global trade in 1980. The thickness of the lines represents the amount of the trade. Uh, that's in 1980. That's it in 2005. It is an enormous connection of the world in ways we've never had it before. Uh, and it's at a scale that human history is very, is, has never experienced or known how to manage. All of these challenges have attitudinal and behavioural components, components to them. Our carbon challenges are challenges around high energy attitudes. Uh, and the way we choose to use, the way we choose, the temperatures we choose to live in rooms in, uh, the ways we use, the ways we use our vehicles, and so on. Water, it is that way in which we ch our diets operate, what we choose to eat, how we choose to frame it. And habitat is constantly threatened again by a whole set of preferences that we have. I think there are a series of underlying attitudes too, and that's where the real challenge is. We have come to have a set of views about freedom that actually is that really, really would, would like to be able to do anything we want to do. Uh, it's the strawberries in winter argument. We live in a world, in a sense, without constraint. We deny many of our human limits, and yet, if we, if we are to survive this century, it's to learn to live within the limits of what it is to be human in, in, humans in community with others and with the rest of the planet. And our identities, particularly in this, in this last century, have changed enormously. They are less secure than ever, than ever before, and wealth, for all of the time that we might focus on quality of life, we still focus an enormous amount on the acquisition of wealth rather than well-being. Now, I think if we are to solve those problems, we need a very particular set of capacities. And these are the capacities, um, if we are to solve complex problems, we need to be able to think in terms of systems and to really be able to work systems-type problems. We need adaptive leadership skills, which are the skills of actually not the leader saying, d describing the answer, but engaging and mobilising communities to solve the answers and to find multiple possible solutions and emerge them up. 
We need to have a priority to social intelligence and network mobilising skills if we're to be able to do that, because these are community-driven solutions and that require new patterns of behaviour for people to engage in, and will certainly need judgement. The enormous ability of people actually to pick the patterns. Dealing with complex problems is about the experience of picking patterns. Global problems will also require a global ethic. We may or may not achieve global governance at a scale to be able to manage these problems. What educators across the world can aspire to do is to create an ethic based in their people that means that collaboration will become because people have values that will lead them to do it. And attitudes and behaviours mean we need to actually to have the capacity to reflect and to create both new models of meaning and new models of self if we're to live in this world, and for all of the people we are educating to be able to do that for themselves and for others. Now, I think if we're to do that, it presents some particular challenges, because both our school and our tertiary situation is not well designed to build those capabilities. And it is, I, I, by a measure of caricature, what I describe now. But because people are doing things, and there's some extraordinarily exciting things happening in colleges, there are also extraordinarily exciting things happening in schools, but it's not what the system as a whole is focused on. There are points of radical and exciting innovation going on across the education system. They need to be amplified so they become the system. For today, if we need intra-systems thinking, we still have an extraordinary focus on discipline. Graham last night mentioned that need for people solving these problems to be talking to each other in wholly new ways and yet we become ever more discipline focused. Our education system focuses on the creation of experts. We will always need experts. But in addition to that, we need T-shaped minds in the 21st century. People who have depth, true expertise, but also genuine, genuine breadth. We have to fashion judgment. To deal with complex problems is about pattern recognition. The ability to see in the data what computers can't see because they're not great at pattern recognition. It's a distinctively human task. You've got to experience things in order to be able to recognise patterns. You can't learn it in the classroom. You've got to be doing doing to, in order to achieve that. We focus on individual inquiry and solution, where it's in fact the ability to work with others, mobilise other people, engage them, inspire them and make, coll collaborate together. That's actually how we advance understanding. We need a global ethic that isn't utilitarian. An ends to means uh, uh, kind of ethic ultimately won't solve the kinds of challenges we have in our world. And we need a focus on emotional intelligence, meaning intelligence, if you like. And yet we preference from the earliest days of school the development of um, analytic intelligence outrageously. Of course it's important, but actually ever since we discovered that humans have multiple intelligences, we really had an obligation to recognise we need a system to develop those. It's not an either or, it's a new way of working across all of those capacities.